You're going to have to pray for me. I've had trouble with my eyes these last two weeks. I can't even see myself properly in the mirror, and let alone trying to read my notes here. <laughs> um, just to give you a little background, now I know you rent this place, but coming here is, causes a bit of, um, I don't know how to say it. We came from America in 1955 to relieve the pastor of Revival Center Church. Of course, then it was just in a house. Now it has a beautiful premise to it, all right? And so it's like coming back to my roots where I first came for one year. Uh, we were supposed to go home after that, but the Lord just kept us here on and on, and I'm still here. Amen. I came when I was a young lady, and now I'm going on 93 years old. So, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm kind of using that cane. At home, I can walk around without it, but every once in a while, I lose my balance. So it's better I have it. <laughs> Amen. Let's forget about me now. Let's see. Oh, I think. I'm going to speak tonight, or the, yeah, it's almost night, after, late afternoon, on the exceeding greatness of his power, all right? Um, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. I really felt this was the message for today. Spirit of the living God, I just pray that you are going to anoint your messenger, Lord, with all of the, you know, areas that I can't see that well, I can't walk that well, but Lord, you're in my heart. And you are my rock, you are my strength, you are my everything. And I just pray that this message that I felt is the one that I should minister on today, you're going to anoint it, Lord, and you're going to touch hearts and lives and God, those who have not yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit, that you will create a hunger and a desire for it. And those of us who have been baptized, that we will realize what it's all about, why we were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and that you want to live in and through us and minister through our lives. I thank you, Jesus. If there's anyone here that's not born again, I pray that your Holy Spirit will speak into their hearts as well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. It's going to be a challenge today. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Let's just try. Um, Okay, if you have your Bibles, you follow me, all right? Maybe they will put it up. I think Sharon was gracious enough to make some PowerPoints for me. That's okay, we'll move you a bit further up so they can write there. Is it better? Whoop. Oh, yeah, that's, that's better. <laughs> you don't mind, I think I'm going to have to wear my glasses in order to see this print. My daughter told me, she said, why don't you make the print a bit larger? I said, to tell you the truth, because I don't know how. <laughs> I used to be pretty good with the computer, but the older I get, the worse it is. Let's turn in our Bibles to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. All right, so as you can see, I'm going to talk to you about the power that we receive after the Holy Ghost comes. Now, I'm just going to talk a little bit for a moment. There are two kinds of power, all right? There's one power that you receive when you get born again. That's exousia power. That means power, the privilege of becoming a child of God. That comes on you when you get born again. But... You're not, some people believe it, but I pray none of you believe this. Some people believe when you're 
born again, you're automatically filled with the Holy Spirit. No such thing. If he came on you, he would have to judge you because you were a sinner. See, he saves you first. He applies the blood of Jesus first and gives you that marvelous privilege of being a child of God. Amen. Then he says, I don't expect you to live this life on your own, trusting in your own strength. I'm going to give you my precious Holy Spirit. He will come into you and abide in you and live through you. That's a different power. That is dunamis power, all right? So that's what we're going to talk about today, all right? Now, um, Paul, St. Paul, all right, he prays that we will receive the spirit of revelation. We're going to be speaking from Ephesians chapter 1, starting with verse 17 right through to either 22 or 23. So follow me, all right? It, verse 17 says, this is Paul praying, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, all right? God is a spirit. And as a spirit, we cannot know him any other way. You can't know him with head knowledge, all right? You can know about God, but if you want to really know God, he has to be revealed to your spirit, all right? He is a spirit. When you're born again, before we're born again, the Bible says we're dead in trespasses and sins, right? You're dead, there's nothing you can do about it. You're just dead, and there's really no way of communicating. But once you accept the Lord, he puts you into Jesus Christ. He creates you a new creature. He gives you a brand new spirit that is alive and able to touch God, able to receive God, able to hear from God, able to communicate with God, all right? So... Paul tells us here, I'm praying that God is not only going to give you his spirit, but give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. So God reveals himself to us through our spirit man, all right? And it says wisdom. Now, you might wonder why I did. That's how come I know why because I began to ask God and searched him out. And I realized, you know, if you start really knowing about God, there is a chance that you will get proud and a bit arrogant. And, you know, I know him, and your nose goes up a little higher, you know, get a bit snooty. You know, I know him, he talks to me, and no, 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 we need wisdom. Because that wisdom will tell us you don't get proud. If you learn anything about God, you quickly share it with other people. You don't want, in fact, I'm reminded of a story. It's, I didn't have it written down here. It just comes to me now. There was this lady, and she had been lame most of her life. There was something amiss, all right? And... Um, then she asked if she could come and stay at my house and for me to pray over her because she said something is wrong and I've lost the peace and I don't know what it is and would you help me? So I said, okay. This is many, many years ago. And so I wanted to know when this happened. I said... Uh, was this after you got born again? No. Was it after you were baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes. So I said, then we're not going to look any further than that. When you were baptized in the Holy Spirit, you had peace. You had joy. 
Now, what actually happened that you lost your peace and joy? You see, I, I'm just going to try to make it short, this story, a bit, because of her lameness and Anyways, she, she always felt like she was useless, worthless, and so forth. When she was baptized in the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues and seemed to get ahead of the rest of the family, they all began to come to her, pray for us, help us in this. How They would bring their prayer request to her. She seemed to know God more than the others. And she was very happy because suddenly she had a position in the family that she never had before. And then her sister-in-law, who used to come to her for prayers a lot, said to her one day, I want you to help me pray. I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit just like you have. And she realized it was from that moment she lost her peace because she wasn't happy at all. She didn't want her to get the baptism of the Spirit because then she would lose that place of, you know, being lifted up. This is why Paul says we need wisdom to know how to behave, to realize nothing we have is of ourself. It's of God and God alone. Isn't that right? And when once we realize that, then as God begins to give us revelations, we won't get puffed up and proud about it, all right? So it cannot be mere head knowledge. To really know him, he has to be revealed to in our spirits, all right? It says in verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, all right, so I, I see there, what does it mean, the eyes of our understanding? It's talking about spiritual understanding. When Jesus, 1 John 5, 20 actually tells us this, when the Son of God comes into our heart, he gives us an understanding, all right? The moment you're born again, you have spiritual understanding. Your spiritual eyes are now opened up. So it says here, the eyes of your understanding, meaning your spiritual understanding, being enlightened. Not you don't get it all at one time. It's a gradual thing. You get to know him more and more. I want to tell you, I might be old and shaky and that, but I know the Lord more now than I did when I was young. A lot more, a lot more. He has been revealing himself slowly but slowly, revealing to me my hidden faults, slowly but slowly, helping me to get rid of things that I didn't even realize I had. This is what he comes into us for, friends. He doesn't just come into us to speak in tongues. He comes in us to empower us. And so it says here that you might know the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe, all right? That's verse 19, that we might know the exceeding greatness of his power, this dunamis power, all right? Uh, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this power, all right? It, this verse tells us, when we operate in faith, when faith arises in us, uh, then God takes whatever it is, that situation, and he does something into that situation, all right? There's a lot of things we know about God that we don't know in practicality. We don't know it actually to see it in front of our eyes. But he is in us Whoever has been baptized in the Holy Spirit, this dunamis power is in us to do miracles that we couldn't do on our own, all right? The first thing I want you to realize, it comes from this Greek word, all right, meaning force or energy, all right? 
In fact, the word dynamite in English comes from that word dunamis, all right? So it's explosive power or energy, all right? I'm going to give you a mini illustration here. Uh, you know, a, actually, I don't know what it looks like, but I've read about it. A stick of dynamite is very small. It's very small, all right? And it might look insignificant, but if you light that wick on that stick of dynamite, all right, as suddenly, I tell you, it can literally explode a mountain of stone, all right, and break it into tiny pieces, all right? Uh, that's exactly what God can do in and through us. You will be shocked at what, how God can use you if you will only believe that you can be used. There's a lot of people, oh, I'm not a preacher. Oh, I'm not a teacher. Oh, I'm not this. I'm not that. So I can't do it. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have this dunamis explosive power in you that can literally break the hold of Satan. I, I'm going to tell you a story that I just read today. All right. Uh, do I have to stick to my time? Thank you. If you want to leave any time, you can get up and you can leave. All right. Uh, because I, I really want this message to go forth. But it was about Smith Wigglesworth. He's one of my favorite men that I read about. You know, I, Not so much now as in, in my younger days. I had so many things about him. But this, I saw it uh, early this morning, and, and I read this story. He said, I was in an afternoon service, and he said, quite a few people got healed. And then most of them had gone. And I saw a young man over there. So I figured he's hanging around. He wants to have a word with me. So he went over to him and he said, may I help you? Do you have a need, young man? And he said, yes. He said, I, I really would like you to pray for me. And Wigglesworth said, what do you want me to pray about? He said, can't you smell it? He said, I have been thrown out of three hospitals. They don't want me there. And he had been living a life that wasn't a clean life. And he had broken out all over his body. All right. And so Wigglesworth asked him, do you know Jesus? Have you been born again? Have you accepted Jesus? He said, no, I don't. But I really would like to be healed if you will help me. And Wigglesworth said, fine. He put one hand on his head, one hand on his stomach. And in the name of Jesus, he rebuked and cursed that thing that was in him that had been caused by a lifestyle of sin. He cursed it and commanded it to leave him. And this young man went like this, and he said, oh, I'm healed, I'm healed. And Wigglesworth said, and how did you get healed? He said, by your prayer. He said, no, no, no. He said, Jesus healed you. And he said, Jesus? You mean he's here? You mean that was him, that warmth that went through my whole body? And he cried out, Jesus, save me, save me. And he went away from there, not only healed, but born again. I'm telling you, that man, I'm talking about Wigglesworth, was full of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the same Holy Ghost that's in you and in me. It's because we keep looking at ourselves and we think that I can't do that. Uh, I can't do this. I can't do the other thing. But I'm here to tell you the Holy Ghost is in us. And if he leads you to do something or say something, he will back it up and he will do it in and through you. Amen. 
And today I pray that you open your heart to this word and realize God wants to use you right where you are amongst the people that you know. You don't have to have any kind of degree. You don't have to go to Bible school. You don't have to do those things. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, he wants you to know the exceeding greatness of the power that is released to you or me at any given situation when faith is released. All right? So it... Jesus. Now, I'm going to have us... Um, no, I'm jumping down too far. <laughs> yeah, I talked about the explosive power, all right. But there's more to that dunamis, all right. There's also, uh, it is called miraculous power, all right. In fact, it, it, it's miracle working power. And by implication, this is what the Strong's Concordance says. It is a miracle in itself. Self, all right. Romans 8 14 says, As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So God does not intend you to live this Christian life on your own. He wants His Holy Spirit to lead you, guide you, direct you, uh, empower you, show you, all right. And this, this is the way he wants us to lead. If we're real sons of God, you don't just do whatever you want. You let the Spirit guide you and lead you. All right. This is actually the way that Jesus lived and walked. All right. He said, this is Jesus in the Bible. He said, I do nothing of myself, only what he saw and heard from the Father. This, this answers why when Peter and John came to the gate beautiful, remember there was a man there over 40 years old. He was born lame. Jesus went in and out of that temple regularly, but he never healed that man because God never told him to. See, only if God told him to do something, then he did it. All right? He didn't just on his own, do anything. And that way, whatever, and the same thing about talking. He only spoke those things that God told him to speak. He was a man of few words unless God showed him what to say. And it would be wise if some of us learned some of these truths about Jesus and not just, you know, well, it says that you can raise the dead. I'm just going to go and try to raise the dead. Don't you do it. That dead man will not raise. But if God tells you to do it, and you do it, that dead person will raise. Amen. So, you know, I remember this one time. How many of you know there's two sides to us? There's the flesh, and God says the flesh, all right, he's condemned. And he doesn't want, and nailed it to the cross. Jesus died in your place and my place after the flesh, the natural man. But when he made us a brand new person, he, all right, made us after the spirit. And he tells us we're to walk after the spirit. So I'm just letting you know, just because you're born again doesn't mean that old nature is not there. We have to reckon it's dead. We have to say no to it. We have to say, I'm not going to obey this thought. This is not the thought of God. These are my own thoughts, my own ideas. And we reckon we're dead to sin. All right? So I was, uh, went to a, I don't know what, what it's called now, but in, then it was where they put the mental, you know, Woodbridge. We called it Woodbridge in those days. And I, I went to visit this uh, lady, all right? And while I was waiting for them to call me to go into the room, there was this other lady that came up, and she was just 
uh, her saliva was slathering out of her mouth, and she got right up into my face. Well, even when I was young, I don't like people getting right up into my face. And so as she got closer and closer to me, I began to back up, you know. Not that I was afraid of her. I just didn't want her in my face. She got me into a corner, and everything in me just wanted to say, get out of here. I wanted to push her. I, oh, it just made all the hair want to stand on my... You say, that didn't sound like a Christian. You better believe it. <laughs> that was my flesh. Yeah. But I came, and then they called me just then, and that rescued me from this lady that was in my face. Another day, I came back to visit that same lady that I had come the other day. And suddenly, I, I brought a friend with me, but suddenly I heard screaming, just screaming, uh, just blood-curdling screams. And something in me said, I've got to pray for her. I've got to pray for whoever it is, all right? And I started down, and a nurse stopped me, blocked me. No, you can't go down there. And I said, I have to. I, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher's wife. And God is showing me I have to pray for this person. I don't know who it is, but I need to pray for this person. And God just opened the way. The nurse, instead of... You know, saying, no, I said you can't. She put her, she said, okay, you just follow the screams. The minute you get done praying, come and leave here because you're not supposed to be in there. So I went down and I followed the screams and I came to this where there were bars there. It was a padded room and there was this lady just knocking her head on the wall, screaming to high heaven. And suddenly, I looked at her, and I recognized who she was. She was that very lady that I, ooh, get away from me, all right? But God loved her. And God put in my heart, pray for this person. He didn't tell me who it was. Uh, I, I don't know if I would have gone to pray for her or not. But I, I went there, and I called her by her name. And I called her over. I said, put your hand through these bars. And uh, I said, I'm going to pray for you. And she did. And I prayed for her. And I asked, I don't know what I said. No use trying to remember. It was years and years ago. I prayed. And when I was finished, I just said to her, I'm going to go now. But God has heard my cry. He's the one that told me to pray for you. Remember, she's in a padded cell. The next time I came to visit my first lady, I saw a whole group in that middle of the reception hall. Uh, you could tell somebody's going home. They had a suitcase, and there were all people around. And I was just going to walk by, and this lady, I'm, I think her name was Grace, she, she said, uh, Mrs. Seward, don't you remember me? And I turned and I looked, and there was that lady I had prayed for, mentally in a padded cell. And this was only like two or three days later. She was being released from the hospital, totally normal, totally sound. And was it me? No, I can't do anything like that. It was the Holy Spirit in me, and when he guided, all right, and directed, then, so it says, those that are led by the Spirit of God, they're the true sons of God. We need to hear God's voice and know what he wants us to do, all right? Um, I want us to go now to the book of Psalms, all right? Psalms 46. And this is, this is talking to children of God, all right? It, it says, God is our refuge, and God is our strength, and God is a very present help in trouble, all right? He's our strength. He's our ability. 
it's a marvelous thing to be a child of God, all right? Because God becomes our source, and we don't need to fear anything. In fact, it goes on to say, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, all right? And though the mountains be cast into the sea, though you have the greatest earthquake there is, you don't need to be afraid when you really know God because he is your source. He is your help. When you have trouble, you can run to him and hide. That's what a refuge is, all right? And he's a very present help in trouble. What I have found is if you have plenty of time, God might not answer your prayer immediately, all right? If he's trying to teach you a lesson or whatever it is. But if it's something that within a minute or two you're going to fall, you're going to die, he's a very present help in trouble. God knows when he needs to answer you immediately and when not, and when you're in a lot of trouble, I'm here to tell you that he's there. And it says, all right, there is a river. This is the same. The whole reason for me choosing this portion was because of this. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, that holy place, all right, of the tabernacles of the Most High. We are that city. This river is the river of life. It flows from the throne of God, and it is the Holy Spirit. It is likened to a river. How many of you know a river is not a pond? You know, a pond is uh, it's just still and quiet, but a river is flowing. That means this second, the water is here. The next second, it's fresh water. That's the way life in the spirit is like that. He's ever new. He's ever fresh. He's ever flowing through us in his mighty power. It says God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. All right? This river, all right, will make us glad. It says the streams whereof will make glad the city of God. And this river has streams that come off of it. Uh, if that river is the Holy Spirit, life in the Spirit, what are some of the things that we derive from it, all right? It's a healing, deliverance, direction, insight. There's so many things because of the Holy Spirit that because of him, it's not just that uh, one thing or another. And another place tells us it's not a one-time experience. It is waters to swim in. It's a life to live in that way. I'm going to tell you just one of these streams, all right? Uh, th this is when my mother came to stay with us. My mother had three kinds of heart trouble. And one of them was um, a blood clot that was going through her body. And um, we had been told, because my uncle was a doctor and others, they, they had said that, you know, if that hits, the, hits her brain, She's going to lose it all if it hits this place, that place. It, it was pretty bad. And when my mother would have a heart attack, she would be like six weeks getting well. All right. So one day I was at home alone with my mother. Now, I'm saved, and I was b baptized in the Holy Spirit ever since I was maybe 13 years old. All right. So... It isn't that I didn't know about the Holy Spirit, but I was more fleshly than I was spiritual, I think. And so suddenly in front of me, I, I saw her just, you know, kind of collapse. And I recognized she was having a heart attack. Usually my husband was there and he would know what to do. I, I 
I just went to pieces. I, you know, I started fanning her, uh, you know, trying to get air into her, and all the time I'm crying, Jesus, help me, oh God, I don't know what to do. I don't want her to die in front of me, you know. I was almost berserk. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit came upon me. Now, he was in me all the time. As I'm crying out to God in my total dependence on him, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do. I, you got to help me. You got to help me. The only way was through the Holy Spirit. And he rose up within me. He came upon me. And suddenly, I, instead of a screaming Mimi, I stood up. I felt this strength. I put my finger under her nose, and I began to pray in tongues. Don't ask me what I prayed. Uh, you know, it sounded like an anti-aircraft gun. Da 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 da. I don't know what the words were that came out, but as I'm doing that, suddenly she just went, <gasps> and she was 100% okay. Yes, you can give the Lord. <clears throat> I should never have tried to show you what I did. <laughs> I'm telling you, before that, she would be in bed for at least six weeks, gaining her strength back. But this time, no. And it was because whatever that prayer, whatever, when the Holy Spirit came upon me, strength, I I was no longer scared. I was no longer a screaming Mimi. When his spirit came upon me, I dared to just speak into that situation, and she was totally healed. You know, before um, <clears throat> World War II started out, well, actually, um, Anyways, let's not go into history. The, the ship was called the Mariposa. And um, all of the Americans had been told and advised, get out of Peking, get out of China, <clears throat> because we will not be responsible for what happens to you. And so my mother and father, they had been you know, packing, trying to get our things in order for us to go. I was just a little girl at that time. And uh, separately, God spoke through the Holy Spirit to my father and said, you're not to go. And my mother, the same. She had already packed how many bags? And God said, you're not going to travel. Others are going to go, but you don't go. You stay here. I mean, it sounded like the most preposterous thing. But when she and daddy talked together and realized God had spoken to both of them, each of them separately, all right, uh, they said, no, we, we cannot go. So I can still remember we went off to say goodbye to everybody, and I was still asking them, why aren't we going? Why do we have to stay here? And we were captured by the Japanese. We were put into concentration camp and so forth. But, you know... <clears throat> When we were, just before we were taken away to the concentration camp, uh, the Chinese Christians, many of them were new believers. And that when they came, uh, and they were, because the Japanese planes were f flying over, and they had all come to the church and were at, uh, on the back porch of, we lived above the church. And they said to my mother, you know, we said, if the Hansons leave, then we know their God isn't who they're claiming their God is, and we're not going to keep serving him. If they stay, then we know that they trust in their God. Now, who else knew that they were saying that? But God knew it, and God, through the Spirit, told my parents, don't go, don't go. So what I'm trying to tell you is, we need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. After Jesus died and rose from the dead, all right, 
Um, in Luke 24, 49, he appeared to his disciples and he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. All right, that's the baptism of the Spirit. That is the promise of the Father. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued or clothed upon with power from on high, all right? Uh, God knew we cannot live this Christian life on our own strength, on our own ability, and really produce what God is wanting to produce through you and me. When he saves you and saves me, fills us with his Holy Spirit, he is wanting us to demonstrate his life, his power to other people, all right? It's not just do this, don't do this, and go to church. That's not what it's all about. It is living the life, all right? And so I'm, I'm going to go back again to that Ephesians where we stopped, all right? We're going to pick up there. It says that ye may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power according to the working of his mighty power. That's a rule of measurement. It's telling us what kind of power it is, all right? According to the working of his mighty power, verse 20, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So it's resurrection power that he's talking about. You, you know, Jesus was dead three days and three nights. He wasn't just, you know, like some people think, he fainted for a day or, uh, you know, a few moments. No, 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 no. That is not real death. Three days and three nights, he was dead, dead, dead. And yet God raised him from the dead. That's the kind of power that he has given to you and me when he put that resurrection power in us, all right? Um, he says, and ra raised him and put him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. You know, God showed me that there are three points in this, all right? His, this power is three points. This was years ago, and I have never forgotten it, all right? Number one, it is power that defies the laws of nature. That means the law of nature says when you die, you're dead, and that there's no more hope for you. But God says, no, death is not the end. God has resurrection power where he can raise them. The second thing is, it is power that, you know, defies the edicts and the, uh, oh my goodness sakes, verdicts of men, all right? And then last but not least, the power and authority of demons, all right? I I'm just going to give you a story for each of these, and then we're going to wrap this thing up, all right? This power that we receive when you receive the Holy Spirit, the sign that you have received the Holy Spirit is God takes your tongue, which the Bible tells us is the most unruly member of our body, and yet he takes that tongue and uses it for his glory and baptizes you with the Holy Ghost and with fire that will destroy the fire of the demonic realm on your tongue, all right? The tongue is one of the worst members. Every kind of animal and beast has been tamed, but the tongue can no man tame. That's what my Bible says, all right? But the Holy Ghost, when he comes on you, takes that tongue of yours and begins to form words and speaks through you. You don't understand what he says, but just like when I was praying over my mother, it worked. Whether I understood it or whether I didn't, it brought forth the goods. Amen. So uh, the first thing is 
God's power defies all the laws of nature, all right? And I remember this one time when we were having a tent meeting. And um, after the tent meeting was over, we were going to take everything down. It had been raining, and, and so there were puddles of water inside of the tent. People had already gone back. And suddenly we heard people say, something happened to Edward, so something happened to Edward. And I was inside of the house already packing my bags because we were going to leave that very night and take the kids back again to Singapore. And something happened to Edward. Well, I didn't know what it was. I, I wasn't sure, but what had happened was he wanted to be helpful. He was a school teacher, and he stayed behind to help take things down. He was standing in a water, all right, and he pulled the plug, not realizing that it had never been taken apart in the house. That's where the mains were. And when he did, you know, that uh, three-pronged plug came and just landed here, and automatically his arm flexed, which pushed it into him, and, you know, the, the uh, power was just going into him, and he fell down. He was standing in water besides. My husband was in that tent, and he ran over when he heard them say something happened to Edward, and not knowing what he had done, and he reached forth. Thank God, God didn't have him attracted to him, all right, but rather that power through my husband. Then he realized he ran in and pulled the mains. But they carried this Edward. He was totally lifeless. He was dead as dead could be, all right? And they brought him in, and as he walked by the room where I was packing the things, I remember saying, it's all right, don't worry, it's nothing but the devil. My husband wanted to say, Marge, he's dead. <laughs> I'm so glad he didn't, because if he would have, I probably would have reacted like I did with my mother, ah, you know. But he never said a word, and they laid him down, and they gathered around him, and they started praying. And by then, I had come out of the room, and I came over there. Now, I had no idea that he was dead. But when I got there, the Spirit of the Lord spoke through me and said, you spirit of death, you come out of him right now. Come out of him right now, you spirit of death. And, you know, he suddenly, and I won't demonstrate it, because if I take a deep breath in, you'll lose the speaker. So <clears throat> he took this, it, it sounded terrible a, as he breathed it. I wish I could show you what it sounded like, but it, it just sounded like, you know, s some animal with his hoof in the mud, when he, you know, oh, it was the most horrid sound. And then he just spewed out. And it, though it was really dirty, nasty, it was the nicest thing there was. They got him up and they walked him around and around and around till he kind of was back to himself again. He had been electrocuted and without having God on the spot, he would have stayed dead. So, you know, this power that's in us, with, if the Holy Spirit works through us, anything can happen. Go to the second one that says the edicts and the verdicts of man. You see, when people, when Jesus died, before he died, do you remember what the people said? Away with him, crucify him. We don't want him, get rid of him. He deserves to die. That was the edict and verdict of man. God said, you don't want him, I want him. You don't want him, I want him. And three days later, God raised him from the dead. Amen. And I'm here to tell you, it's still the same thing. When my grandson, Sean, he was just here a week or so ago with his whole family. 
And, but when he was, he was born here in Singapore. His mother is my youngest daughter. And when she uh, needed to go to the, her water broke, I drove her there. And um, I had a brand new little car that the church had given me. I was so proud of that little car. But it wasn't very nice when we got her all, everything, blood, water, everything all over that car and, and w took her in. But she gave birth, and even though they didn't think he was going to come out alive. Th the cord had been wrapped around his neck and everything. But when I came in one day to visit her, she said, Mama, the doctor said, Sean will never develop a brain more than a five-year-old because that soft spot on his head is too small for the brain to develop. And I remember when I heard that, it just shot out of my mouth. I don't know where it came from, and I just said, don't you believe a word of it. We're going to pray for him, and he's going to be all right. And so she and I put our hands on his little head, and we prayed and told it all to Jesus and said, Lord, we don't believe what the doctors say. You're going to heal this boy. And then we just left it at that, all right? I want you to know, when he grew up, all right, no five-year-old brain, when he was in college, um, his, I, I see, I can't remember some of these things, what he was studying. Uh, he was studying a very, very difficult uh, subject, and the, uh, his teacher would ask him to correct the people's papers. That, that's how clever he was. And I, I tell you, he is beyond, if I don't have time, but his brain is way beyond anything you could even imagine or think. And yet he's so humble, and yet he does the work of the Lord. He preaches, he loves God, and, and so forth. I'm here to tell you, God's power and God's spirit can bring forth things that man says it can't be done, but... God can do it, all right? And last but not least, that last thing is, all right, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, all right? Um, I remember one time when I went to Australia, and after I had preached in the church, somebody asked me, would you go and pray for a friend's daughter? She had an accident. She was perfectly normal before the accident. But after the accident, you know, she's deaf and dumb. And there, there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, she was normal before that. Well, I, I didn't know. I just said, well, I'll go. But I tell you, I was scared because... I never saw myself uh, as having any of the gifts other than interpretation of tongues. All right. So all the way there, I just kept in my heart, oh, God, you got to help me. Oh, God, you got to back this up. Lord, I don't know how to pray, what to pray, da, da, da. And about five minutes before we got there, the Lord spoke in my heart. He said, it's a demon. It's a demon. All you have to do is rebuke the spirit of uh, deafness and dumbness, and she will be well. Well, when he gave me the answer, I, I was used to casting out demons, so that didn't scare me, all right? That didn't, I, and I relaxed, and I, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So when we got there, the mother and the father had that. She was like a teenager then. And this had happened to her when she was just a little girl. And I told them, I said, it's all right. God has already told me she's going to be healed, that it's a spirit. When she had that accident and went into a coma, a spirit came into her. And we're going to rebuke that spirit, and 
Now, I couldn't have known any of that if God didn't tell me. I'm telling you this, he will not only use you, he has the answers for you as you learn to walk with him, talk with him, and allow him to direct you. And as we prayed uh, for that little girl, immediately her tongue was loosed, her ears were open, and she could once again speak and once again hear. I'm here to tell you, friends, our God is a great God, and, you know, he wants to help us. It says in Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power, the dunamis power that worketh in us. Friends, I asked the question earlier, why do we have fear? Because we focus on the situation. When we focus on him, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. He wants to help us. I'm going to close with one last story. It's not my story, but it is a true story. It has been recorded many, many times. There was a man. He was a Pentecostal man. I'm not going to name his name, but he was used mightily in healing. All right? And this lady had a boy, a, a little boy that was born to her. And that little boy had 26 different ailments. All right? He, he was blind. He was deaf. Um, he couldn't hear. He didn't have feet, just two stumps. Those are just some of the things, all right, that he didn't have. Um, he didn't have proper genitals. I'm, I mean, 26 different things that he didn't have. And this mother took the only thing she had left and drove this little boy and her to the place where this evangelist was preaching in a tent. And um, I, I read it, first of all, under out of Hagen's, uh, an excerpt out of Hagen's book. And he said they took up an offering. She only had $20 left, and she took that $20 and she gave it in that offering. How she expected to get home, I don't know, but she was wanting her child to be healed, and she didn't want anything to stop. You know what the Lord did? He gave that preacher up on the pulpit pulpit. He didn't know. I mean, the tent is full of people. He gave him a vision and told him to call that, and he described it. He said, there's a little child here. He has 26 different ailments, and I want the mother to bring that child up now. Well, there was only one like that, and she brought him up, and he began to weep and cry with compassion over that child. And he held him in his arms. And in front of all the people, first thing, two eyeballs came in his eye sockets. There were no eyeballs at all. Two of them came. Suddenly he could hear. And one by one, the different things were healed. He put that little boy down and took two feet came on those little stumps that were coming out of his body till everything was healed. Now, remember, he had never seen his mother. He had never been able to talk. And suddenly he turned and he said, Mama, Mama, and he ran to his mother and she held him. It made newspapers all over the country. I'm telling you, there's nothing impossible with God. There's nothing he cannot do. And he wants to use you, and he wants to use me. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes right now. Father, right now,
I thank you, Lord, for each and every person that is here. I thank you, Lord, for what they've heard. And I pray right now that you're going to speak to hearts. Lord, we're not here just to make it to heaven. We're not here just to make it easy for ourselves. We're here to demonstrate the power of God. And I just pray, Lord, today that you will move upon each and every person here who has been baptized in the Holy Spirit to begin to seek your face and know that they are filled with miracle working power and that you want to pray through them with that power. You want to use that power uh, with their family, with their friends, with those that are round about them. You're not wanting each and every one to be a preacher behind a pulpit, but Lord, you're wanting them to be your emissary, your representative. And Lord, if there are those here who are not baptized in the Spirit and that desire to be baptized in the Spirit, that really hunger to be baptized in the Spirit, that they will be filled tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, how many of you are baptized in the Spirit and you want to yield yourself to God to let this miracle working power flow out of you when God wants it and you're willing to let him use you, flow through you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, not, not as many people here, uh, but thank God for those that raised your hand. You, you need to really seek him for himself and really ask him, Lord, I want to be used of you. I want to let people know that you're a God that can do anything and everything. I wonder how many are here. You have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but you would like to be. Can, can, can you want it? Just raise your hand. All right. Anybody? I can't see that well. I see one hand. Can you see people? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm going to give it to you to close, and then I'm going to go over there, and those that want to be filled, they can come up, and I'll spend time praying here.